because we were able to check the weather in Pasico uh, just for the next couple of days. And we knew that, huh, although uh, it's nice that it's warm, you don't have to wear as many layers. You actually want it to really be as cold as possible just so the crust on top of the snow stays firm mm -hmm. so you're not post holing so we knew that day four was kind of going to be a race for time just because we wanted to get as much mile as many miles behind us as possible before it warmed up and we started post holing so that's kind of the approach that we had all day and at first uh in the morning it was we were able to make good time uh the trail was still pretty firm and the later in the day it got the more you could tell it was just warming up substantially so we really kind of turned on the jets and we're stopping less and by the last like five miles to carry lean to we started post holing quite a bit and it just so happened that that section of the trail <laughs> also felt like more of a bushwhack than the rest of the trail had just with a lot of branches and whatnot so that turned into just really a grind to get to the lean to which we know we knew we had to get to or I guess we could have camped somewhere else, but we really, uh, to finish and just keep going, we needed to get to that lean too. So we just had to really put our heads down. I think we both listened to music just as an extra pick me up. And that was some of the hardest miles on the trail, just between post holing every other step. Um, and quite frequently, and between the branches that were just slapping you in the face or getting caught in your backpack, at least for me, and pulling you back. But we were able to get through it, although it did take quite a bit of time and quite a bit of um, just putting your head down. And we got to the trailhead, and we knew we were going to carry lean-to because it said that on the map. But all we found was a sign pointing us towards something called the Cedar River Flow Lean To. Yep, yep, yep. I know exactly where, you're, where you are, yep. So we were a little confused, especially because on trail trail signs, they have a foot marker um, on ones that cut off, and they'll usually have like a different colored marker. And we could tell that there used to be one, but it wasn't there anymore as if someone had taken it off and the trail sign looked quite old. So we pulled out the map and <laughs> the thought of going another like two miles or four miles looking for a lean to further down was really quite devastating. So we thought we'd just go and check out this trail to the Cedar river flow lean to, which wasn't mentioned on the map. And sure enough, uh, we followed it for like two tenths of a mile and there was the lean to with the the ADK book at the lean to referred to as the carry lean to. So we were very relieved to get there. Yeah, sure. And yeah, at where you are at that sign that points you to the carry lean to or the Cedar River flow lean to, as it says, is off trail. So it is a little bit of a gamble there, too. It's like, oh, man, do we. Do we go another two miles knowing that's where the lean to is going to be, or do we kind of risk it and go maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which if you come back, it becomes another additional half a mile that could not be anything. So, yeah, I totally understand that uh, that gamble. But fortunately, it, it paid off and it was worthwhile. And at this point, too, with that five, you know, that last five miles that you talked about just being a total grind, it's also just like completely the middle of your trip now. It's like you're you're settled in. It's day four. You're way too far out to being like, okay, I just got to grind it out another day or two. You know, you're, you're still very much in the thick of it. So mentally, I could imagine that that moment of, you know, we got to put some music on, just kind of keep walking and know that uh, this is going to be the type of scenario that you're in 
in the moment that will be more fun to talk about later than it is to experience it right now out in the woods. I've been there many times, and I assume that's probably how you guys felt. So at the end of day four, when you did finally get to the lean-to, how are you guys doing as far as um, feeling fed, you know, with your calories and everything, and, you know, mentally, how did you feel at that point moving forward? For me, it was definitely a big relief to get to the lean-to, not only because we weren't sure if it was going to be there, but also just because it marked the end of the day and it also marked, I believe the halfway point for the trip. I think we, at day four, we were almost exactly 70 miles. So that was really huge. I remember my dad gave me a uh, fist bump for getting halfway there. And I told him that uh, we could do another fist bump at the, when we finished the trip. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So take me through day five, Tim. So uh, you guys are starting at the carry lean-to. You're now halfway through the trail, and uh, you're about to flip the map over, literally and figuratively, uh, the actual NPT map. So you're basically halfway done with the map. How did day five turn out to be? So, yeah, day five, it did not get very cold the night before, which I don't think it even froze. So I know that we were, um, that, that there were going to be some issues. So we were hiking and, um, we, the, the first little bit of the trail was okay. Um, and I did notice Henry, even with his pack and everything else was about 50 pounds lighter than I was. So there would be times I would have him breaking trail because I noticed he would stay up on the crust longer. Um, he might fall in every fifth step or 10th step. And I was falling in more like every, every third, fourth, fifth step. So it was easier for him to break trail. And then, um, we were, we were going, so we were making okay time. And then, um, what we, did at this point is I believe we hit um, there's there's a, a road up there that's mainly only by snowmobiles and uh, I, I believe that's the that's the day um, and there was a 1.2 mile it was kind of uphill right before we got there and I remember that stretch because Henry was literally walking on the snow and I was post holing every single step. And I was like, Oh my, he's, he's just gaining. He's ahead of me. And I'm just, I can't even stay up with him because I'm post holing every step. And he, he was, he gained, I don't know, in that 1.2 miles, he was probably a couple hundred yards ahead of me and he was at the trail register and he signed it. And then we got on the road and we were able to hike, and we go through Wakeley Dam, and then uh, that was easy hiking because of the snowmobile path and everything else. And then once we got on the, um, once we got back on the trail, that is, and I think I have the right day. Uh, of course, my days get mixed up. Is, isn't that right? No, that's correct. Yeah. And so once we, then we had lunch on the snowmobile on the the road and right before Mm -hmm. we got on the path and you could see when we were about to step onto the trail there was a lot of snow in there there must have been three feet of snow and it was it was warm that day we were hiking with our in our long underwear tops with the sleeves rolled up and um so as soon as we We had lunch there. As soon as we went in there, I knew I was like, oh, no, this is not going to be this is not going to be fun. And so we just kept going and we were we were post holing. We were post holing. We were post holing and going, 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 not making the best of time. And for a while we got off trail and we didn't really know exactly where we were. And we just kept kept going. And this was the worst day. We had to go up some hills. The worst, worst day for me, anyway. 
and we were breaking post holing uphill and you're we're going down what 14 inches and your all this the snow became mashed potatoes and it just was falling on your snowshoes then you were trying to go up you pull your leg up and we just slowed way down and we there, there was at one point that we it took us five and a half hours to go eight and a half miles and we were breaking we were at the point where we would break trail for 15 minutes and then we would switch to the second person to break trail for 15 minutes because as you know it's a lot easier to, as for the second person than it is for the first and that was what I was afraid of. I, I knew this day was coming because of the weather report. And I knew that this we had to get through this day because I knew a cold front was blowing in. And I knew as soon as that cold front blew in, it was going to stiffen up the snow. So we just had to keep going and keep going. And we didn't know exactly where we were until we crossed this little stream. And I looked at the map and I said, I think we're here. And we just we put our heads down and we just kept going back and forth. And there's during this part of the trail, there's 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 not much in there. There's no there there are no landmarks. There are no lakes. There are no ponds. There's hardly any streams. There are no trailheads. So you just have to keep going and going and going. And we did until we finally hit this trailhead. It said, I don't know. I think the 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 um where we were going, we were going to go to Stevens Pond. It was lean to, it only, it was only like three tenths of a mile away. And we were so happy at that time. I took a photo of Henry because just because for us to remember how happy we were that we only had three tenths of a mile left to go. And that day was the, to me was the hardest day in the shortest day, we only did 13 and a half miles that day. Yeah, sure. And that that stretch of trail that you're talking about, basically, after Wakely Dam, along Metcalf Mountain, there's, there's like, I think there's like a footbridge on the map, and or maybe two footbridges on the map, and then Stevens Pond, and you just walk in a straight line for like five miles. I totally know exactly that slog of, of where you guys are. You're kind of walking through... Um, all hardwood trees and just like a straight line for just it's just completely endless um yes a warm warm day like that sounds like a an absolute brutal brutal experience and yeah 13 and a half miles like you said earlier in the uh, in the episode that's the those longer days you put in are the days to make up for the days like today that you couldn't have really planned for or or, or couldn't have planned in ahead ahead for and just weren't have to deal with as as they come so that makes perfect sense. Also, I want to compliment you on when you had were talking about having Henry go first because he wasn't post holing as many steps as you were. That is a pro move. That is a move that comes with experience to uh, understand that that would make more sense for him to go first. He post holes less, which will make it easier for you, and then uh, therefore you're both you're both winning at that point. So kudos to you on using your experience there to make a good decision. So on day five, you eventually did make it um, to. Let's see, you finished at the Stevens Pond lean to. How did that? How did that night go camping? Yeah, that was um, that was good. Right beside, I went down looking for water. There's a little spring that comes out down near the lake, and it was so nice because uh, I was. Uh, the, the lake there didn't really have a lot of slush on a little, little lot of snow it was ice so it it even though it melted there wasn't really water out there but this little spring was great and um so i was able to get that water and it wasn't long after we got into camp and boiling up and everything else we it was windy and it's always for me when it's windy in the Adirondacks, I'm so happy to be in a lean-to because I've seen trees come down next to my tents and stuff like that. And that is one of the things people say, oh, aren't you scared about this or that or and I, and being remote with no sat phone? Or I'm like, no, I don't like it. In the, I don't like sleeping in the 
the wind when I'm in a tent because I'm always <laughs> trees going to fall on me. Yeah. So I was happy to be in the lean to at that night, but I knew that wind. I told Henry, I said, this wind is exactly what we want because this is ushering in that 